Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just gone two o'clock, so ready for a prompt start, so all good. Um, so thanks for registering for today's webinar. Um, and today we're going to spend a little bit of time explaining why, why we're, we're saying throw away your receipts and just a little explanation as to why and how we can go about doing that. Um, on the, on the right-hand side there, we've got a little image, quite simply, snap, as in take a photograph on your phone, screw it up, throw it in the bin, and hopefully we can demonstrate why it's as simple as that. So hello, thank you for joining us, you're all very, very welcome, and um, thanks for spending a little bit of time with us today just to, to find out about this webinar. Um, for those who don't know Tyrrell & Company or myself, um, we're a firm of accountants based just outside Cambridge. Um, we're very enthusiastic about using technology to solve a lot of headaches for small businesses. Um, and as a result, we've, um, we've been fortunate, fortunate enough to um, win awards on the back of that. Um, personally, I've been a partner in the firm for over 20 years. And these days, I spend lots of time looking for solutions to help um, small businesses. Because um, these days, and more so than ever, there's plenty of affordable tools which you guys can use. We're very fortunate today to have Alex Clark joining us from Receipt Bank. Fresh from his travels in South Africa, where he's been <laughs> showing showing the guys there what Receipt Bank's all about. So, welcome, Alex. Thank you for your time today. No, thank you, Richard. Thank you for having me along, and uh, welcome everybody to the webinar that we're going to be running. Uh, a little bit of background about me: I'm a, a cloud implementation specialist, I suppose. Uh, I spend a lot of my time working with firms like Richards to help them embed the solutions in the practice that he, he's been talking about and help them to provide a high level of service to their clients um, and ultimately through that help their, their clients like yourselves excel in your business as well. Fantastic, thanks Alex. As I say, he's, just, he's, he's fresh back from South Africa so um, <laughs> I'll say this sort of technology has taken off all around the world and he was lucky enough to go so good on you. So Before we get going indeed, into full indeed. flow, just, uh, yeah, just, just a few systems checks. <laughs> Um, so it's just to make sure that you have the best audio and visual experience, can you just make sure that you've quit all your other applications, um, close anything that may be competing for bandwidth, because it might affect your audio, so this includes things like websites, Skype, email, etc. And just don't just close the windows, they might be running in the background, so just um, quit them entirely, um, just to make sure you're experiencing the best audio experience. Um, anything like Dropbox and things like that, just pause for the duration of the webinar, again, just to make sure that you're getting the best, you know, the best view of things. Um, on your screens, there'll be a control panel, um, so you can ask any questions using the control panel. Um, so literally, just type your question into the panel, press send, and then myself and Alex can pick up on any questions towards the end of the webinar and um, answer any queries that you may or may not have. No, um, no difficult questions, though, please. Those will be ignored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll ignore difficult. Just a, so, any easy questions, just put them in there. Yeah. Um, so, if, you, if, the, if the control panel is blocking your view, then there's a there's a collapse expand button on the side there, so you can just do as you please with that to hide it or expand it to type any questions you might have. Just the last point on housekeeping, um, if you do navigate away from the presentation or can't find the control panel, just look for the, the daisy icon for go, go to webinar and that will get back to you where you should be. Um, again, just before we get started, can everybody just type something in the, in the question box or something just to make sure everybody can hear, if you could just type hello or something similar, that would be really good. Excellent, so we're all good to go. Just also, we've got Debbie Spooner joining on today's webinar. She's in the background just making sure everything works properly, so if there are any technical hitches, then she'll be around just to, just to keep us on track. So without further ado, we'll crack on. Um, so, receipts are really annoying. Um, we spend a lot of time with small business and have worked with small business over a number of years and are fully aware of your feelings towards receipts. They're just a complete and utter pain. Um, 
What happens is you find certain receipts are prioritised, like you always make sure you've got the big receipts for the computer purchase or the car purchase or the van or stuff like that. But it's always a, quite often it's a little receipts like um, the, the cost of coffee receipt or the car park receipt that you just can't be really bothered with because it's just too much effort. But it actually can be, and I, and I know you, Alex, you've got a nice little story surrounding um, a, a client in particular who didn't Indeed. use to record parking receipts. Yeah, did you want to do you want to run through that? That would be really good to hear. I that. will. I will, and everyone will get the uh, the idea as the webinar goes on. That I'm I'm the man that's going to uh, bring in the stories, give the examples, and and you know hopefully they'll tie in nicely with with what you've been able to do with your clients already, um, Richard. But the story here is so simple. It's exactly as Richard's been through. I was working with a business. Um, it wasn't a big business. It was a couple of directors, and they essentially gave up pocketing and keeping track of small receipts because at the end of the week, at the end of the month, it was it was too much of a burden for them to be fine. You know, one pound sixty p, one pound fifty receipts. So they just chucked them away. Um, their accountant actually um, gave them a solution, gave them um, Receipt Bank as a means to document those uh, transactions more regularly and, and effortlessly is, is the, the phrase that was used in the story. And over the course of a year, as a, as a bit of a case study, they um, ran a report to find out exactly how much they'd spent on parking a previously unclaimed expense. And over the course of the year, they'd actually claimed back, well, not when I say claimed back, but they'd documented over a £1,000 worth of expenditure in parking between the two directors. So it just it throws a point to, to, to Richard's example that actually these receipts, they all add up. You know, lots of small individual transactions put together actually can be quite a big value and, and that can be quite a lot of tax you can claim back or anything else that you can do within your business. So it's a really, really important um, expenditure to, to be documenting. No, that's really interesting. And also on, on top of that as well, it just helps the whole accounts preparation. Like when you're trying to marry up the bank to your receipts, if, if everything's documented, it makes it makes life a lot easier. You can you can actually identify what certain receipts represent and marry that all up to the bank and reconcile it. So it all it's all good stuff really. Um, and as Alex indicated during his little story there, I mean, because it does take a lot of time, and it takes more time than you think. Sometimes people don't always bother. Well, what we see a lot of the time is um, clients losing hours every weekend um, or every quarter or even worse, every year when it's time to prepare their accounts because people put all this sort of stuff off because it's painful, it's tedious, it's dull, it's boring. Um, it's a bit like when you're at school and Sunday night comes, you've got to do your homework because you put it off for, to the last possible moment. And I think the same now applies to stuff like data entry and bookkeeping. So if we can take a lot of that pain away, and that's got to be and, a good thing all round. And and on that one, yeah, Richard, just yeah. just um, I guess just to put some of my experience in on this, and um, almost all small businesses, sole traders, do their bookkeeping or do this process inefficiently. Um, and it's not a choice to be inefficient. It's not a choice um, to be um, disorganised or to to not have a, a better way of doing it. It's simply um, a, a lack of knowing that there's a better way of doing it. That there's a more efficient way to operate. Um, and I think that's the key here. When we were at school, we did our homework on a you know the last minute. It was because what we didn't realise was that if we actually did it a week or two weeks in advance, as and when we were set it, it wouldn't pile up. And and that's the the big one here is that by leaving it until the last minute, we're actually increasing the amount of work we have to do, because there's there's three weeks worth of build up rather than it being well let's tackle these one at a time and, and go through them individually. So I think this this um, inefficiency, as I said, comes from a lack of knowing and a lack of understanding that there is a better way of doing it. And that um, I know certainly is, is your um, intention today, but is is to educate uh, around other ways of of getting rid of these pains. No, 100% you're spot on there, Alex. And even when you go back to the origins of Receipt Bank, this sort of scenario is exactly where Receipt Bank started, isn't it? It's just through Michael and, and, and the is. way he viewed Receipt Pay. It is. So, I mean, our, our founder, to give everyone a, a slight insight, essentially was fed up um, and annoyed with having to put all of his receipts into his pocket, into his jacket, stack up his invoices on his desk when he was a, a business owner. Um, so he looked out there, he, you know, he's an um, inventive source, he went out there to find a better solution, a better way of doing it, um, and stumbled across what was then called Receipt Farm, um, a very, very small um, company that uh, over the course of the next six or, or 12 months actually went out of business, um, and Michael then acquired, and, and over the last five or six or seven years, the rest is, uh, is history up to today. So yeah, absolutely, it's um, born out of, uh, out of somebody else's pain, I suppose. 
Yeah, and probably pains that so many small businesses are going through. So again, there's a solution now available where we can, you know, we can take some of that pain and some of that burden away from you. Um, because if you are losing receipts, if you are not recording all your all your all your receipts, all your expenditure, then it is essentially escaping money. It is you know essentially if we're not claiming a deduction, it's costing you tax. It's costing you um, you're not claiming the VAT. So you know we need to we need to get on top of all of the stuff, and if we can do that in a simple way, then all for the better. And again, on top of this, um, because what we're going to be talking about today is a is a digital solution. You don't need to keep the paper. We can keep digital copies. So again, it frees up storage space. You you don't need to be storing stuff in your garages or your sheds or your lofts anymore. We can store it all digitally on the cloud, so you can access it at any point. Which again, we'll talk a little bit more about very soon. And again, because it all is digital. Um, you don't need to search for that one particular receipt. I mean, so many clients, you know, we get calls to the office saying, oh, I need to find a, a, a builder's merchant invoice for this because I need to get a refund and we're sifting through the paperwork or <laughs> even worse, the client's coming in to collect their box of records, you know, 20 mile trip here and 20 mile trip back there just to find one paper receipt. So again, because everything's digital, you can just, you can just access your expenditure records via your computer um, and, and because it is online. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I was going to say the important thing there, and people will guess we're in different locations, so we're going to <laughs> be jumping it over each other at times. <laughs> but the important thing there about the storage is, is um, not only is it out of your office, it's out of your um, your back uh, spare bedroom, your garage, wherever it may be, but you're no longer, and I'm jumping and stealing one of the, the um, lines off of a slide, you're not looking through piles and piles of paper anymore for that transaction. You're typing into a search box certain values. You can find it instantly. And... Um, you know, you talked about people coming in and trying to find stuff for a refund or the, the great example I've got here is about VAT inspections and you know, previously a two or three day process where you're sifting through filing cabinets of information looking for particular transactions is now done in a couple of hours because they're asking for a transaction. You can go straight into your accounting software or straight into the platform that you're using and you can find that transaction in a matter of minutes. So it's quick, it's easy, it alleviates a lot of the stress around these type of things and um, that just frees you up, as we said before, to, to focus on what you're good at, which is you know running your business. Yeah, no, that's right, because that's, that's important, actually, because you, you mentioned the VAT aspect. I mean, because one of the questions that we get asked as, a, as accountants is, because people are scared about throwing away their paper and moving to a digital solution, and mm -hmm. one of the questions that we get asked regularly is, is it HMRC compliant? Does it satisfy the needs of the, the, the tax man? Um, and and so, I mean, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. I was going to say, absolutely. The, the short answer is yes. Um, the, the slightly more um, long-term answer is there's a concerted effort in the UK at the moment to try and make tax digital, and you'll have heard about this making tax, di tax digital um, plan certainly coming in for sole traders over the next um, year or so, and, and it's going to happen um, for, for larger limited companies and, and such over a slightly longer period of time. So. There's no um, fear around it being rejected or not accepted. It's very much part of the government's plan moving forwards. And ultimately, the, the reason behind that is that it makes everybody more efficient. It makes the government more efficient. It makes the accountants more efficient. And, and really importantly, it makes businesses more efficient because you're not worrying about difficult um, uh, aspects of, of, of business that you didn't really go into business to, to find out about. You can get on with doing what you're good at, and you can let people like your accountants, people like Richard, do, do what they're good at. Excellent. And again, on top of that, because people are leaving stuff to the last minute, or people are doing it at the weekends and wasting their Sunday afternoons, you know, doing their day entry, because it's not current, you, 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 you never know what your profit is until your year end, because you're never on top of your paperwork. So this can affect stuff like your growth plans. It, it, you, you're basing your decisions on a on a gut feel or what's in the bank. Whereas if we can get on top of your paperwork and your receipts are, are recorded um, in a timely manner, advisors such as us, we can we can we can help you make those important business decisions and and help you with your growth plans in a much better way than focusing on data which is months out of date. So again, it just enables you to. To, to view your business in a different way and to and to go down a different different path than it has been in the, in the past, um, and I think even the clients that we work with using these digital methodologies, I mean, they'd much rather discuss their future rather than focusing on the past. 
I mean, we get clients, you know, you, you look at their accounts which are nine months old and it's just like, well, there's no point in discussing those anymore because that's not where the business is, business is, is now. So let's just look at where the business is now and then look forward rather than backwards. So it's using this sort of technology which allows us to do that. So typically, the typical expense management process at the moment, is, I guess this is uh, going to ring true with quite a few. So when it comes to business buying, basically this is the process at the moment. So we get the receipt, we stick it in our wallets or car glove box or purse or whatever. We get them all together at the back at the office or back at your homes, stick them in a shoe box or a drawer or, or something like that. When the time comes, which is normally because the government are demanding a VAT return or a tax return or a set of accounts, we start putting all the receipts together and going through the piles of our receipts and then we start filling your spreadsheets or entering it on systems such as Sage or QuickBooks or, any, or anything else you might have. You've lost a few receipts and then once you've done that for yourself, you've then got to go through exactly the same process for your employees, which to be quite honest, it's just, it's just yeah, it's painful, as we know. <laughs> and you end up tearing your hair out. <laughs> if you've still got any, that is. Um, I'm glad to see that the slides had me looking a little bit younger on, on my photograph. Um, but yeah, I've been pulling my hair out for a long time. But there's a better way. There is a better way. Um, and that's a digital process. And the thing is, accounting has involved. Um, just like so many other industries, it's moving online, it's moving digital. And there's a great little graphic on that slide about just you know just around evolution, um, which and is very very. If I can, I was going to say if I can step in there, Richard, and just uh, of course. I guess give give my my impression on this, this kind of slide as well. Uh, I think it all ties back to the slide you had a couple a couple of slides ago about profit, uh, and not having an understanding of what's in your bank, not understanding what um, your your cash flow forecast is looking at uh, as a business and. As a business owner, um, and I, I challenge anyone on the webinar to correct me if, if I'm wrong here, but as a business owner, you're not particularly interested in how you paid your staff 18 months ago, how you paid your rent 12 months ago, or what your bank account looked like six months ago, because it's outdated information. It's not information that's pertinent to you today, to, to now. What you're far more interested in is knowing, well, how am I going to pay my employees at the end of this month? Have I got enough cash in the bank to buy um, you know, a, a new a new set of computers or whatever the needs are um, and I think that's where accounting has evolved and that's where it's changed is that by utilizing technology accountants can now give you that kind of insight and give you that kind of information that allow you to make business critical decisions and because there's a more real-time flow of data coming to the, the fingertips of the accountant um, they can perform those advisory services in a real-time real time manner, not a, well, okay, this and this is the sort of thing you need to change for the next six months, but this is what you need to do now. You're in trouble. You need to raise some more invoices, or your sales look low this month, so actually, have you just forgotten to raise some, or do you need to go and get some of the invoices that are outstanding and, and collect the money? And, and that's where it's evolving. It's changing into a, a far more advisory role, and I think that's, that's the big thing, and, and that's this, or, or rather, the, the documentation of purchases and expenses is very much the beginning of that, that flow. Yeah, I mean, you work with a lot of accountants, Alex. I mean, you, obviously, you're seeing firsthand about the, the, the sudden shift to this new mm -hmm. way of working, this new real time information, this new cloud accounting or online accounting, for want of a better word. I mean, you're seeing it firsthand. And I mean, even when you look at, I guess, the receipt bank growth over however many years. Year on year on year on year on year, it's just growing at such a rate, isn't it? This this this, and the appetite for this sort of technology and solution is it's just increasing all the time. I, I, yeah, I agree, and I, I think um, for the most part, it's driven by, or what we see as driving it is a change in in client trends in the business owners and sole traders and practitioners. They want this type of information at their fingertips, and they want to know how their business is performing, and that drives the the way forward. And it means that providers come into the marketplace that can give that information and give those insights. Um, and yeah, absolutely, it's um, it's very much it's exploding. I would say at the moment. And it's not just a, um, a UK phenomenon. We've been through it in Australia, New Zealand. Um, we're going through it in America. We're going through it in the UK. It, it's taking over um, business globally. No, fantastic. And it's all about you know all this digital stuff. It's all about moving one step closer to paperless. We don't need to be keeping lots and lots of paper anymore. We can go on our Save the Trees campaign and just not not you know not worry about have to worry about paper anymore. Um, and that again, another 
Yeah, it's one of yours, Alex. Another interesting few statistics there. Some some good facts there about mobile devices, Alex. Indeed, and uh, if everyone takes a second to just read it, it's you know ninety six percent of all small businesses use smartphones to conduct business, um, and sixty two percent of smartphone owners. And this is very much um, a shift in in how we or how reliant we've become on technology. Um, check their phone at least ten times a day, and I guess. Yes, this is more of a challenge than anything else to people. Um, technology is, is so important and it's, uh, we're so dependent on it in how we do our business, how we conduct our business. We have, um, you know, people use Twitter to, to promote their business, they use Instagram to document their shops, they use technology for their, um, for their EPOS system and, and so on. There's a whole range of, of different things we use technology for to, to help us run our business or help us, help us to do our business. But, the, the challenge is actually to utilize technology to help your business grow and to make yourselves more efficient and allow you to focus on um, you know, the, the business critical elements, not the, the parts of running a business that aren't important, your bookkeeping, um, you know, raising sales invoices. Those things should be efficient, they should be automated and this I think in itself is, is um, very evident of that in that technology is taking over business um, so it's about how we can utilize it to, to make ourselves more productive. So, than, than we were before. I was looking at that 62% of smartphone users check their device more than 10 times a day. I think I fall in one of the 38% um, who check it about 150 times a day. So <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, think the, I think the kids are even worse. So um, yeah, very Absolutely. interesting. Yeah. So I think ultimately on that, we, we're just saying as part of this process of, of digitalization of recording your expenses, Using your mobile phone is actually part of the process, which leads us on to the fact that back to that original um, sheet, snap, crumple, bin, and we'll, we'll run through a little bit on how that process actually, what that process looks like in, in, a, in a later slide. But that's that's the concept behind a lot of this, um, especially what Alex involved in with Receipt Bank and what we're trying to do as a firm of accountants in terms of the way we could these, these new ways of working. So you might think, well, how does this affect you? Well, our clients are getting their time back. They're they're doing something less tedious, or far more important, or even better than that. Just sitting back, relaxing, having a cup of tea. If you like Alex, he's probably watching a game of rugby because he loves his rugby. <laughs> While Receipt Bank's doing all the heavy lifting. Um, there's there's no need for you to do all that data entry, all that input, all that. You know, it's not necessary anymore. Wouldn't you agree with that, Alex? That's you know, it's yeah, and it's not. Uh, I, I think um, again it goes back to this shift that we're talking about with technology is that we we look at the industrial revolution and we, we look at how people went from handcrafting furniture to mass producing furniture and, and the, the same is very much true here in that if we can do things quicker more efficiently by using technology then why would we not do it and if you look at how the furniture industry has changed those that still make um, furniture by hand you know the artisanal um, furniture makers are charging a, a huge amount for that that furniture because it's, it's got a rare quality to it it's you know it's unique and why you know if we can make things more efficient and pay less for them and, and do things better, then why would we pay a huge amount of money for something that is done with, you know, th that that same skill? If that makes sense, um, and I think the same is true here. Using technology allows us to do things more efficiently, more effectively, um, and as a result of that, we can we can uh, spend time doing other things that we're more interested in and we and we want to be doing. Yeah, no, I think that just applies to lots of different industries, isn't it? Not not mm. just accounting. We're probably seeing it, you know, everybody who's watching the webinar today within their own um, trade sectors or, or industries, they're probably seeing changes due to technology as well in terms of efficiencies and stuff like that, which mm. they're adopting. Um, but I think probably a lot of the time people don't always see accountancy as somewhere where they expect to see innovation. So the fact that this is going on, yeah, it is because people have this, the stereotypical image of what an accountant does, or this perception of what an accountant does, and that skill set, that that role is changing as as, as things evolve due to technology. Mm. Um, so moving on, I mean, we've talked a lot about the what Receipt Bank is about and about saving time um, and the efficiencies, but just now we need to perhaps spend a little bit of time explaining how how this is all possible. How does all this work? Um, where Receipt Bank integrates is a is a is a software company, a software product that integrates with um, cloud or online a software called Zero, which you may or may not heard of. Now, Zero is 
accountancy software essentially it's a accountancy software platform but why we love it at Tyrell and Company is it was primarily designed for business users um, to use rather than accountants um, our view in the past that other software accounting software products are, have, have really been used or really been designed for accountants to use and use terminology which which is an everyday language whereas zero is written in a way that people can understand it it's easy to use it's easy to navigate and that's why we're keen to um, to recommend this sort of solution to our clients so I'm just going to play a little video next um, just to give you a little, a little insight into what receipt bank is um, but to do that I'm just gonna have to do play around the uh, computer a little <laughs> bit so just bear me two seconds and uh, we'll come on to it later um, later in the webinar, but it, it's all around giving you that, that insight into your data and giving you the ability to access it effortlessly wherever you are. So hopefully this will give you an indication as to, to how the front of that works, and Richard will be continuing to, to tell you about actually what, what this means for you as a business. So um, hopefully the, the, the video will work and we'll, we'll go from there. The world of business is constantly evolving. But at Receipt Bank, we know that you, like so many businesses before you, went into business to follow your passion. That's why our passion is to remove the burden that receipts and invoices put on you and your business. We know that dealing with receipts and invoices is stressful and distracting, taking you away from what you do best. Businesses around the world lose thousands of pounds per year in lost and unclaimed expenses. With Receipt Bank smartphone apps, you can record these on the go at the click of a button. What's more, our software is based in the cloud, meaning that both you and your accountant can view the same data in real time. No more waiting until the end of the year to analyze your cash flow. Receipt Bank eliminates stress, automate your bookkeeping, and that's it. Hey, there we go. It worked. Are you uh, are you back with us now, Richard? I think so. Can you hear me? <laughs> we can hear you. Yes. Excellent. If anyone can't, again, just type a quick message in the box. That'd be really cool. Excellent. Okay. So back to the slides. So just so you can get a feel for what it, how it looks in action. Um, for example, this is, um, I'm still in Alex's thunder now, because this is probably the sort of stuff that he <laughs> demonstrates to, to people talking to him. But um, on the left hand, this is a screen when you log into Receipt Bank. So on the left hand side, you'll basically see a, a picture of a petrol receipt, a fuel receipt that I just literally took a photograph with on my phone, and I pressed Submit for processing. That's all I did. So I basically took a photo and clicked Submit. Now what happens at that point is that it goes into Receipt Bank, and then Receipt Bank extracts all the data from it. So on the right hand side um, you can see that Receipt Bank has recognized that it's a receipt, that the date of the receipt is the 8th of May 2016, the supplier is BP, the currency is in Great British Pounds, and there you have the total £64.51, the VAT £10.75 and the net amount of £53.76 and it's categorised it as motor vehicle expenses. So all of that has been extracted from that receipt with the end user, me, you or any other business user doing practically not a lot. Um, that's one of the ways you can get your um, information into the receipt bank. Another popular way that we come across is that if you're a receipt bank user, you get a, a dedicated email address. So this is something that you can give to your suppliers. So rather than them emailing you PDF invoices, which hit your email inbox all the time, and you print them off and put your paper copy in your ring binder, you can literally just ask them to forward those PDF invoices directly to receipt bank. And then receipt bank can extract all the data, and then from that, that will connect your purchases and put them all into zero from you. So a very, very, very powerful tool and a, and a, and a huge hit with our clients. Have you got anything to add there, Alex? No, I think that's uh, I think that's covered it. It's all about the simplicity of it, and uh, the simplicity starts with with how how easy it is to get the information from the point of sale into the system. Um, because once it's in the system, the majority of your work is done, and, and you can then really start to actually reap the benefits of, of your accounting systems. Excellent. So, 
again, just going into what Receipt Bank is, Receipt Bank, I mean, I'm referring to it as a zero add-on. Now, what that actually means is, okay, zero is the accountancy platform that I referred to, but the way it's been built, it's got over 500 different software applications that integrate directly into it, and Receipt Bank is one of those. So these software tools that integrate into zero are called add-ons. So these are, as I say, they're tools that integrate into your system. So again, what Receipt Bank does, in a, in, a, in a nutshell, in a brief summary, is it scans all your paperwork and receipts, puts all the data straight into zero, and essentially cutting out the need for bookkeeping and data entry. I mean, I think it's a wonderful solution for clients, um, and I think, again, Receipt Bank is recognised by lots of different organisations, won lots, multiple awards, hasn't it, Alex? Yeah, I mean, uh, without, I guess, singing our praises too much, we've won the zero times <laughs> a year for the last four or five years, um, and I, I think what you've said is absolutely spot on. It, it, it's um, all, about make, all about making things straightforward. I guess where we position ourselves in this, this kind of data journeys with a facilitator, um, rather than you having a, a big thick pile of paper to get through at the end of each month or week, it allows you to drip feed data into your accounting platform, which means that it's less of a burden at the end of the week and, and it's more of a real-time data flow. And um, I think the best example I've ever I've ever been given actually about Xero and, and its power is that if you take Xero as your iPhone, um, it's a fantastic um, piece of equipment, it's great, you can ring people, you can send texts. but as it is, when you could put, put, pull it out of the package, um, actually the first thing you do is you download the applications and you get the other things that bolt onto it that make it so much more powerful. And all, ultimately, it allows you to customize it to yourself as well. And that's where the Zero ecosystem comes in. It allows you to bring in a multitude of different tools that allow you as a business owner to be as efficient as possible in, in any walk of life. That's right. Let's just move to the next slide. Yeah, so again, Zero. Just to, I'm not going to go on for for a long, long time about zero, but just to give you a flavour of what that is. Again, it's an accounting platform, but it's essentially changing the the way small businesses do work, and it's changing the landscape for the way that small businesses can operate. So again, it enables you to get a, a real time view of your cash flow, just because of the way it connects to your bank. So you're constantly getting an updated um, stream of your money spent and money received, you know, you're on top of it all the time. And because of the way it's been built, and it was built by, where well, it started off in, in New Zealand about 10 years ago, because a guy called Rod Drury, he was just fed up with the limitations of traditional desktop software. Um, so he, he, he started zero, and that was 10 years ago, and it's, and it's grown rapidly since. Um, and he, it's been built as a, as an online tool, so you can access it anywhere, anytime, on any device, so whether it be your computer, whether it be your iPhone, whether it be your tablet, whether you're sat on the beach, if you're that way inclined and wanting to do your bank reconciliations, well, over to you. Um, but it just gives you that complete flexibility and enables you to, to get a better grasp of your business than you ever have done before. So as it says, it's small business accounting software that's simple, smart, and occasionally magical. And I'd be delighted if anyone wants a demo of Zero just to run them through that, as I would with lots of other bits and pieces that we're talking about today. So just moving back to um, Receipt Bank, I mean, just, a, just a, a client example that was prevalent in my mind when we were putting these slides together, is that we had a construction company, um, always had time issues around inputting their data, and because they brought in lots and lots of materials, um, I spent ages looking for invoices just to get those, those odd refunds, and because of the sheer quantity of, of invoices they were receiving from suppliers, they were having masses and masses of paperwork. I mean, there was, I think there was three crates of um, those big, big um, plastic crate storage boxes they used to bring in every year for their accounts preparation. So the storage was just phenomenal. So they said, look, okay, forget all that. Start losing receipt bank. So they passed on their email, their e. Um, Receipt Bank email address their supplier, so their invoices were going straight into Receipt Bank. The directors were using the mobile fine app for their fuel expenses and their expense claims. And because they didn't have to spend that time looking for, for the invoices, they were just searching for the stuff online, um, which just saved them so much time. It just made their lives 
a lot easier. So that, that was a huge success story. And I get, I guess you must come across these sorts of things all the time, Max. These sorts, of, these sorts of success stories, hey? Yeah, I mean, they, they come in thick and fast. It, it, it's really simple, and, and that I think again, going back to earlier on, is the beauty of it. It's a very, very straightforward way to get rid of a large amount of pain. Um, and increasingly, suppliers are, are willing to email invoices to a, an address of your specification these days. Um, surprisingly, uh, it's actually more convenient for them to do as well in most instances. And Places like Travis Perkins are already doing it, and it means if you're a business owner, let's say, and you have tradesmen going to the shop every day, they can still collect a receipt every day, but actually you can get Travis Perkins to send over a summary at the end of the month, and you can put that straight into your receipt bank account without you having to touch it, but you've still got visibility of it. Um, and, and I think, as you said before, that, that that's it. I mean, these guys are a great, um, a great example because by implementing a small change or a couple of small changes into their process it saved them a world of time and that's really what it's all about it's made their lives easier um, and it's given them um, an opportunity to focus on growing their business I mean what is the cost and this is something that a lot of people don't think about what is the cost to your business of you doing something that isn't generating income so if you're sat there uh, even if it's on a Sunday if you're sat there for four hours on a Sunday doing your bookkeeping every month that's four hours you could be doing something to help your business grow or to help you develop your business. Now, yes, you may think it's on a Sunday, but if you're going to work on, on a Sunday for four hours, why not spend it doing something that's, that's going to bring value to your business and is going to help your business to grow first thing Monday morning? And, and I think that's it. It's the opportunity cost of what what is the consequence of me not doing it? Yeah, 100%. And again, an, another example that I was just thinking of while you were speaking, Alex, is that we had a client in particular who was outsourcing their bookkeeping work. And we're paying the bookkeeper, I can't remember what the figure was off the top of my head, but it was a few hundred pounds a month doing the bookkeeping. Well, that was eliminated because they were able to keep on top of their um, bookkeeping user and receipt bank um, and just with a little bit of guidance from us. So again, you can use it to save money on, on those external costs as well. So again, it's just a, lots of different stories that we could talk about, about how this has worked for so many businesses. And we keep referring to this cloud accounting or for the want of a better word online accounting um, but it's no longer a new thing it's been, so it's been around for a, a quite a few years now um, and technology is just changing society changing the whole the whole world we live in now I mean again we're in a world now where we're almost continually online whether it be on our mobile devices on our iPads on our tablets on our computers you know the world we live in now as I say my, my mobile phone's with me all the time. I mean, it gets answered all the time. Well, unless it's unless it's the mother-in-law where you say, "Oh, sorry, I left my phone in the glove box overnight." But um, we won't go into that one. Um, so again, thing, things have moved on. Things have moved on. It's a different world. I mean, look at the way that lots of different businesses have evolved over the years. I mean, one one example is iTunes because buying CDs or DVDs or old and that cassettes and vinyl, if you're that old. Those are dead now because people started downloading their music and buying their music online. And again, take that one step further forward now. I mean, now downloading music from places like iTunes, that's not that's not what people do anymore. It's all about streaming. So iTunes have now moved to Apple Music and you've got people like Spotify or Deezer or or these other people where you're just downloading you're just um listening to music on demand or streaming music on demand. Similarly, with things like Netflix, you know, television on demand. You don't need to wait for nine o'clock on a Thursday night to watch your favourite program. You just watch it when you want to watch it. Um, and as I said earlier, people just don't expect to see that innovation in accountancy, but it's happening, and it's happening in all industries. And that's just a couple of examples of um, of what's going on in the world, which everybody can uh, can relate to. Moving on to, you know why this technology is changing the accountancy world. We have so many clients that really the only reason they got their accounts prepared was just to meet government requirements. So it might be that they need to file a tax return, it might be that they need to put something into company's house, it might be because they've got a VAT return due. And they were the only reason that people were getting accounts prepared. So it was always bad news because they get their tax bill, which is bad news, they get their accountancy bill, which is bad news. So there, there was no... There was no uh, impetus or anything, there was no reason to get accounts done apart from a deadline but set by the government. And as a result from that, you, you normally find that accounts are prepared several months after your year end. And as a result of that, 
information is out of date. And that that historic data is just not an ideal. It's just not ideal for making those important decisions. It's no good looking at your July 15 accounts when we're when we're sat here in May 16 accounts. It's just a different. It's just a, you can't base your decisions based on that data. Um, so again, using this cloud technology, zero plus receipt bank or any other add-ons that we may see fit, just brings you into real time data, which enables you to move your business forward rather than just focusing on the past. But you may wonder, is it a fad? I mean, again, Alex touched on earlier about the government's plans for uh, digitalization of tax returns. Now, don't get me wrong, this, this sort of technology was designed primarily for small business owners, but the government have seen now how it can be beneficial to them. So they're, they're now trying to adopt similar technology to, to help them and the, and, and, and the way they want to move things forward. Um, so again, tools like Zero and Receipt Bank, these are the sorts of things that will connect your digital tax account when this does come in, whether it be 12 months, 18 months, two years, five years, whatever your views on that, whether you're going to be geared up well for it. Um, and again, you mentioned the digitalization, Alex, have you got any further thoughts on, on, on that particular slide? Um, so I, I just think, um, as you've said, it's something that is going to come. When it comes, is up for for, for debate. Um, and when it when it does come, it, having an accountant that's able to plug into it and able to utilise it, um, it is going to stand businesses in a, a much better stead. Um, and there's a lot of developments that are coming along the pipelines that will will make this far easier. I know that we um, we're launching um, as a company something that's specifically designed for sole traders to fit into the uh, making tax digital shift over the next um, over the next year or so. And um, you know com companies like Tyrrell and Co are one of a very few select group that are one of our launch partners. So um, identifying an accounting practice that fits with your ideals and fits with your models is is certainly something that's really important. And and uh, you know they're better. They're the ones that are best able to, to leverage the, the change in the, the digitalization of, of tax. Yeah, on the back of that, yeah, this this application, is, is, as I say, Alex mentioned, there's an application which Receipt Bank have recently developed called um, called OneTap, which has recently been released. So if anybody's interested in, in taking advantage on that, by all means, drop me a note and we can send you a link so you can download it and um, and start using that if you're a sole trader. Again, very a very powerful tool, a very good way of recording your expenses in a way that hasn't been possible before. So, very good stuff. So yeah, so back to zero. I mean, again, it's the account cloud software that we use, the account cloud software that we love. Um, looking at the UK alone, it now has, I think it's about 120,000 subscribers, 130,000 subscribers in the UK now. I think it's 130. It's 130, as I stand correct, 130. So it's now the largest software provider at that level um, in the UK. So it's surpassed Sage subscribers, well, Sage 50 subscribers. It's, it's, it's further ahead than QuickBooks. And this is all within a relatively short space of time. When Zero came to the UK, I believe it was in 2012, they started with eight employees, I think. And now I think they're up to about 150. Is that, does that sound about right, Alex? Yeah, I, I, but if, yeah. If, if those statistics aren't quite right, it just gives you it just gives you an example of the rate of growth that this thing is taking up, and the, just the appetite and the and people getting on board with this sorts of things, and it validates the why people are doing it because it works, and more and more people are taking advantage of this sort of technology to help them. One of the things that we get asked lots is, um, well, if it's in the cloud, is it safe? Well, I have to say, it's more safe than having it stored on your PC or on a server. Uh, because I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but I've had computers die me in the past, and I've lost I've lost information. The fact that it's in the cloud now is a godsend because it, you know providers like Receipt Bank and and, and Zero have to make sure that it's hundred percent robust, secure because their whole business falls down the toilet if it if it's not secure. So <laughs> it is hundred. It is very very robust. And again, with a lot of this stuff, people use cloud all the time, but don't always realize it. So if you're using, I don't know, it could be your email on Gmail, or it could be a Hotmail account, or it could be, as I say, music streaming, or Netflix, or all this mobile sorts of banking. stuff now. Mobile banking, another good example. And again, mobile banking is something that's part of our everyday lives now, which we couldn't do without. And something now we probably take for granted, to be fair. Um, again, this is just another example of techno technological shift. So again, massive benefits, mobile access, 
no software maintenance, so you don't have to up update your up uh, install your updates using the disk. All those are done in the background automatically for you. And Zero alone, I mean, you probably comment on Receipt Bank, Alex, but Zero alone has thousands of thousands of updates every year. Um, some major, some not so major. Whereas something like Sage, you might get two or three updates in a year. So again, this this product is evolving at such a pace. And again, what I love about Zero is that they've they've invested their their budget, if you like, into making a great product. Whereas other competitors have just spent it on marketing rather than and and, and forgot the core product. So it's just a great place to be and a great company to work with. As is Receipt Bank, very much fits in with the, with the way Zero works. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the important thing you said there as well is that there's no need for you to update the software manually. You don't get a disk anymore that allows you to update from Windows 98 to Windows 99. It happens overnight, happens automatically, and, and you're running on the latest version all of the time. No, totally. I mean, even when I'm going back to Receipt Bank, even in my mind, I can think of certain improvements that have been made through Receipt Bank over the last few months, whether it be the, the app for sole traders, whether it be uh, the platform that uh, accountants can see and the, and the type of metrics that we can glean from that. And there's constantly new features being added as these products continue to innovate. I mean, I always, I always joke with Alex, it's one of these things that you just get around, your head around how it works and then <laughs> something else comes in, something new comes in which you have to learn again. So it's, it moves at such a pace and it's great to see. So these sorts of things just basically put you back in control of your business. I mean, as I said before, previously your accounting was perhaps done once a year. You're always behind, and you and you never quite knew where you were, or you're relying on what you know. You're basing your business decision on on, on what's in the bank or a gut feel. Um, so you never quite know where you're at. So receipt bank plus zero. It's just a beginning because, as I, as I mentioned earlier. There's lots and lots of integrations or, or add-ons that you can benefit on quite quickly. And the way a lot of these add-ons work is that they're monthly subscriptions. So again, when you're relating to what happened in the past, you perhaps pay, I don't know, it could be a few hundred or a few thousand in some cases on a piece of software. Whereas these days, the models change. You're now looking at monthly affordable subscriptions, which small all businesses can take advantage of, they're not out of the price range, they can start operating the way that hasn't been possible before. So what we did as a firm within Tyrell and Company, we identified three of the most effective integrations that we could find and developed a, a unique proposition called the Zero Trifecta. So what that essentially is, is looking at that graphic there, you've got Zero as the hub, so that's the heart of the trifecta if you like. And then we've looked at over all the years that we've been working with small businesses, they've always had the same problems. They've always had not enough time, so we're thinking, okay, what can we put in place to help small businesses save time? And Alex very kindly has um, shared with his experience today about Receipt Bank and how that can save us time. Businesses want to get paid faster. Cash flow problems, always an issue. So let's see if we can put in some add-ons to help people get paid faster, stuff that integrates with zero to to automate or semi-automate this cash collection process. And let's see if we can put some tools in place to give business owners some better, some better indicators on their business performance, whether that be financial um, performance or non-financial. I mean, let's start analyzing, for instance, your, your Google Analytics, your Google site, see where your website hits are coming from. Are they coming from direct referrals? Are they coming from uh, generic search? I mean, let's start analyzing this sorts of stuff to, to enable you to, to focus on the strong points or improve the weaker points. But it's all very well having these tools, um, but you still, you still need to be able to tackle the core issues, and you still need that systematic approach and the experiences and insight as an advisor such as ourselves. As it states at the bottom there, I mean, it's not about the software, it's what you do with it. The software alone doesn't solve your issues. They're just the tools that you use to be able to deal with it in a much better fashion. So we're talking about the the, um, the zero add-ons or the zero integrations, and it, again, just to highlight a few, two or three that we like. I mean, for instance, iZettle on the left-hand side there. Many of you may have been to the market or market store traders and wonder what these credit card readers are that they're plugging into the bottom of their iPhones. Well, these are the card re um, readers that are basically iZettle, so this enables you to take credit card payments on your mobile phone. And again, that is a, um, a zero integration, so that 
information integrates into Xero. Um, Rocket Spark, another example. That is a, a simple to use, simple to design website facility, again with e-commerce facilities which you can integrate into Xero. I mean, they're just a handful of, of, of Xero add-ons. Um, and there's plenty more out there. I mean, I know Alex. One of the ones that integrates directly into Receipt Bank is Tripcatcher, isn't it? I mean, I guess that's one that you like. Indeed. Yeah, it's a very simple tool. Allows um, you to track your mileage. Allows you to record um, what your expenses are, what you're entitled to claim back, and it plugs straight through to us, which means it can go um, seamlessly into zero as well. So yeah, it's. Um, I guess the thrust of all of these add-ons and the reason why the ecosystem exists is to, as I said earlier on, like the apps on the iPhone, is to allow you to customize your uh, business needs and your accounting needs to your your your, your own unique position, and, and that's really where these all come in. And there are some that are. And more relevant to, to a lot of businesses and others that are, are really quite unique but it means that uh, from a business uh, point of view you can have whatever you need and it's almost like you can actually have your cake and eat it too so it's yeah it's good it's a really really strong um, platform yeah it's, uh, again the zero trifecta is the base of creating a bespoke business system so it might be that you need something to control your workflow it might be something that you need a, a CRM system it might be a, a, a card reader because you want to take card payments on the go when you've completed jobs there's lots of different options on there which we'll be more than happy to to discuss with you at some point so really if you like what you hear today um, especially about receipt bank and zero that's that's the areas of the trifecta we're focused on today which is the time element and there's and we've talked a little bit about zero in the middle if you want to um, speak a, a little bit more about that with me by all means if you visit that website zero 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 I wish www even <laughs> dot zero trifecta dot com um, you'll be able to book a, a 30 minute consultation with me or if you want to send me an email or just ring up the office, by all means do. I'll be more than happy to talk through your options. Um, before we finish up, let's just have a look if there's any questions, Alex. Um, let's have a little look. Of course. So, uh, well, actually, let me kick this off just with one question to you, Richard. I know um, we've talked throughout this about um, the uh, you know the different softwares available, the time savings, the efficiency savings. But from your point of view, as a, as a practitioner, someone that's out there working with businesses, just how big has the impact been? Do you think on some of your clients? Oh, it's huge. I mean, again, you look at that example with the construction company. That was just one example. But um, again, people, we don't want people to pay us to do their to do their data entry work. We'd rather we'd rather people spend their money with us on actually helping their business. And that's where yeah. we're good. We can we can we can share our years and years of experiences to actually help businesses rather than just crunch out the numbers and knock out the accounts once a year. I think we can offer a lot more value than that than rather than just doing the doing doing the, the book work. So again by putting a solution in place to those clients it just enables us to perform a different type of service with those clients and actually mm. give them a bit more a bit more help a bit more proactivity which again we're in a, we're in a world now where that's that hasn't been possible before because people are on a budget and really the primary function of what we used to do for people was do the VAT, do the tax returns, do the accounts but now if we can put processes in place to make that far more efficient then we can focus on helping the businesses grow mm. Perfect. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I think it's an important pillar, isn't it? If you can get the data, then you can give the advice and you can get the insights. Yeah, totally. So I mean, it's a very, very powerful. And actually, when you actually sit down with clients and actually demonstrate that, you know, when we looked at the slide on the petrol receipt, for instance, when you can actually sit in front of a client and actually take a photo and show them there and then and show them the wizardry behind Receipt Bank, that just gives it a bit of a wow factor because people don't know that that sort of stuff's available. Um, and all of a sudden, everybody has mm. that pain, as we said at the outset. Everybody has that pain. So to be able, to people say, "That's going to make my life easier." It's just, it's just brilliant. It's just brilliant to hear. Mm. Um, so I'm just looking. There's one question here. I think HMRC compliant, which we've already answered. We've done that one. Uh, so here's another one from Matthew. Can monthly suppliers enter their month their invoices directly? Well, I think we've covered that one as well because. What we can do, you can give your suppliers your email address or your, your, your receipt bank email address. So it may be, for instance, matthew at receiptbank.me, and they would just email their invoices to that address and it would go into receipt bank directly. So I hope that 
answers that question. Uh, let's have a look. So here's one for you, Alex, again from Matthew. Okay. Yeah. He builds with QuickBooks Online. Would Zero work with this program or replace it? Well, Zero would replace it, which would be our preferred methodology, but Receipt Bank does, doesn't it, Alex? QuickBooks? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, we, we work with QuickBooks Online, so we'd plug into it, so very much the same as how we work with Xero. Um, uh, we'd be that facilitator, we'd be the, um, you know, I guess the, the the engine in the car. So by by using us as a vessel to get the data into QuickBooks or or Zero, as Richard said, um, then you'd still be able to draw the benefit from the process. Indeed. Yeah, and Matt, on that subject, um, we're big advocates of Zero, and I'd I'd love to show you the benefits of Zero. Um, it might be worth having a chat on that if you if you, if you wanted to. So again, we'd look at receipt bank integration into into Zero, and I think that would be a, a massive win for you on that. Um, so I don't think there's any more questions there, so that just leads me to thank Alex for his time today, for sharing his experience and insight with us, that's very kind of you today. Alex, thank you. No no problem at all, my, my pleasure Richard, always, uh, always a pleasure. Thank you, We're just a bit out of time now as well, so that's perfect timing, anyone <laughs> would have thought that, that was planned. Uh, <laughs> Um, so thank you everyone for tuning in today and for listening to our webinar. As I say, if you want to find out more, by all means give me a shout. I'll be delighted to talk through any of this with you in a bit more depth. And that just leaves me to say, well, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and I'll speak to you soon or on the next webinar, hopefully. Um, cheerio. Bye for now. Cheers then, guys. Bye-bye.